Welcome to iLecture Online and here's an example to test our knowledge now about rotational motion and how to use the equation of kinematics for rotational motion the way we use them for linear motion. And here's our example. It says that we have a rotating circular table that starts from rest and rotates through an angle of, a, of 480 degrees in two seconds. Experiencing constant acceleration, that's important. These equations are only valid if we're dealing with constant acceleration. If it's non-constant acceleration, we have to use uh, integration to solve a problem. So we're staying away from that for now. Um, and it says here, uh, what is the angular acceleration and what is the final angular velocity with these conditions? All right, so where do we start? Well, let's draw a picture so we know what's going on. So we have a, a rotational table or a table that can rotate like this. It starts at a certain point and it travels through an angle of 480 degrees. So that's 360 plus 120. So that's a total of a little bit more than a full circle, right? So we go once around plus another 120 degrees. So we can say that theta is equal to 480 degrees and the time that elapsed during that time is two seconds and we're supposed to find the angular acceleration alpha is equal to. So let's write down what we know and make sure we understand what we're asking for. Okay, now we need an equation to help us do that. So we go over here and we look for uh, an equation that has alpha in it, which all three do, but we're also given the time, which probably excludes this equation right here because this equation doesn't include time, and um, we don't have omega, so we probably don't want to use the second equation. So I think the first equation right here is the right one to use. So let's try that. So theta is equal to theta initial plus omega, omega initial times time plus one half alpha t squared. And of course, this is the variable we're looking for. Notice that we're starting from rest. So there's no angular velocity at t equals zero. So that disappears. And we can assume that we had not covered any angle yet, so also the initial angle covered is zero. So then we end up with the equation where theta is equal to one half alpha times t squared. Solving this for alpha, we multiply both sides by two, so we get two theta equals alpha times t squared. And then dividing both sides by t squared, we get two theta divided by t squared equals alpha. So to find the angle acceleration alpha, we take twice the angular distance divided by the time squared. Now, the angular distance is given to us in degrees, and of course degrees is not standard units, we have to convert from degrees to radians. So we can say that alpha is equal to two times 480 degrees, but then we have to convert from degrees to radians, so we want radius at the top, degrees at the bottom, and 180 degrees is pi radians. I like to use pi radians equals 180 degrees. And then we divide that by the time squared, and of course we have two seconds squared. Okay, now, working it out, we probably want to grab a calculator, because I think a calculator would be rather difficult, especially with the number pi in there. Uh, so we have two times 480 times pi, divided by 180, and divided by two squared, which is four, and we get alpha is equal to 4.19, now this is radians per second square. Again, radians, we don't really have to write it, but I like to have it there for clarity. And so here we have found our angular acceleration in radians per second square. Now, second part of the question says or asks, what is the final angular velocity? So we need to find omega final is equal to, and going back to our three equation kinematics, we probably can use this one right here because we do have now alpha and we do have time. So let's use that equation. Omega is equal to omega sub naught, the initial omega, plus alpha times time. The initial omega is zero because we started from rest. And so therefore, omega is equal to the angular acceleration that we found, 4.19 radians per second square. We multiply it times the time. The time was two seconds. So times two seconds, and notice that one of these seconds cancel out one of those seconds, we end up with radians per second, and so times two is equal to, omega is equal to 8.38 radians per second, which is the angular velocity. There we go. And we found the two answers, 
angle of acceleration, and angle of velocity of this rotating object. Okay, so that was a pretty straightforward problem. Now let's try to go find something that's a little bit more challenging to see if we can, again, apply those equations of kinematics on a little bit more challenging problem. On the next video.